Hey everyone, it's Brennan. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do a TBR for the Thrills and Chills readathon. Plus, I'm just going to go through all the unread thrillers I have on my TBR. So, I feel like I've kind of had weird luck with thrillers. My favorite thriller that I've read has been Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I also really liked No Exit by Taylor Adams, but I didn't really love The Silent Patient, and that's like a super popular thriller. I didn't really love Before I Go to Sleep, which is another pretty popular thriller that's a movie now. I guess I just, I'm not very comfortable with thrillers. I'm much more comfortable with fantasy and with romance. I feel like I could really like thrillers, and I own a lot of thrillers, but I'm just not really sure what my taste is in them yet. But anyway, some of my friends on booktube are doing a readathon. It's called the Thrills and Chills Readathon, the Thrills and Chills Thon, and it is a thriller based readathon. It's going from, I think it's April 29th to April 28th. It's like 10 days and it is hosted by Caroline from Caroline Johnson, Sarah from Sarah's Shelves, Nicole Lee from Bon Bon Reads, and Savannah from Riveting Reads. So I will have all their channels linked below and I thought this would be a great excuse for me to clear some thrillers off my TBR. So I'm not buying any thrillers for this. I'm making the books that I own fit these prompts. And I'll put up a picture of the bingo board for the readathon here. I might have to switch it out some because I don't really know how to put two pictures on the screen at once when I'm editing a video. Listen, I work with what I can do, okay? The first prompt is deserted and this is read a book with an isolated setting. I'm going to read One by One by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller and they obviously it's a thriller i'm sorry all of these are going to be thrillers this is set i think it's like a business retreat that goes to a cabin or like a ski resort that has been deserted and then everyone starts dying one by one kirsten from kirsten's corner really likes this book so i'm excited to give it a read the next prompt is backstabber and that is a relationship gone wrong this could be a romantic relationship, a familial relationship, and I'm picking My Sister the Serial Killer by Oi and Khan Braithwaite. I said that wrong, but I tried. This follows two sisters and one of them is a serial killer, but it's like she gets into relationships and then she finds a way. She ends up killing the people that she's with, but it's always like it's in self-defense. I don't know. Sounds interesting. It's really short. I'm excited to read it. The next prompt is guilty and that is a thriller subgenre that you like. Your favorite thriller subgenre. I don't read a lot of thrillers so I don't really have subgenres but I'm picking Verity by Colleen Hoover and this is a Colleen Hoover book. Okay so guilty in that Colleen Hoover typically writes romance and I like romance but also just in that I really like Colleen Hoover books. I feel like Colleen Hoover is her own genre. Her books are so messy and dramatic and I just eat them up. I can read them so fast. And she has a romantic thriller. This one is a girl who goes to ghostwrite a book for this author who has like had a stroke and then she maybe falls in love with that author's husband, I think. Yeah, I hear really good things about it and I'm excited to read this book. The next prompt is Gaslight and that is read a book with an unreliable narrator. And I feel like that can be like a plot twist. So a lot of the books I have, I don't really know if there's an unreliable narrator in them, but I have The Wives by Taryn Fisher. And I think that maybe this might have an unreliable narrator in it. So maybe I'll try to pick up this book. But like I said, I don't really know that about some of these books, but if you know that about some of these books, maybe like vaguely let me know if one of these books has an unreliable narrator. The next prompt is Nailbiter and that is a five star prediction. I'm going to use Verity again for this prompt because it's a Colleen Hoover book and usually I just love her books. So I'm going to double up and use this for that prompt as well. The next prompt is get out and that is a character running from their past. Caroline mentioned this in her video so I think I'm going to read this. I have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. It follows a woman who was at a camp when she was younger and maybe some girls from that camp like went missing and now she's an adult and she goes back to the camp. I think that's the basis for this book so excited to read it because 
I own several Riley Sager books and have not read one of them, so I better get started. The next prompt is Under the Influence, and this is read a book recommended by an influencer. I'm going to use One by One by Ruth Ware because Kirsten loves it. I'll have her channel linked below too. So I'm doubling up. I just don't think I can read a different book for each of these prompts in 10 days, so I think I'm going to end up reading like maybe five or six or so. The last prompt is split and that is read a book with multiple perspectives. I'm going to read The Initial Insult by Mindy McGinnis. This is a YA thriller, I do believe. I have only read one Mindy McGinnis book and it was my favorite book that I read last year. That was being not far from me. And I have her newest release, this came out And I have her newest release, this came out sometime this year, like maybe in February, I'm not sure. This came out this year, I have it, and I want to read more Mindy McGinnis, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to make the second half of this video very rapid fire, so just bear with me. Let's go through all of the physical thrillers I own that I have not read. Also, I don't know a lot about these because what's the point of reading a thriller if you already know too much about it? I have The Woman in the Window by A.J. Flynn. I think this follows a woman who is like kind of stuck in her house and watches things out her window. I have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I really want to read all Gillian Flynn's books because I love Gone Girl. I think this follows a journalist who gets herself admitted to a psychiatric institution because she wants to expose something that's happening there. I have Things in Small Jars by Jess Kidd. This is a Victorian mystery and we follow a female detective and she like kind of gets into some supernatural stuff and the things in jars are like curiosity cabinets that were kind of popular like with rich people and maybe there is some like carny things like like old time carnivals like weird things like that i have one second after by william forschen this might not even be a thriller this may be more like post-apocalyptic like the power went out and now we're surviving i have kill creek by scott thomas and i'm not gonna lie i don't know anything about this but i bought it because caroline from caroline johnson likes it maybe like an author goes somewhere i really don't know at all i have where they found her by kimberly mccrete Again, I don't know anything about this. Kayla from Books and La La liked it. And she reads so many books that I just like implicitly trust the books that she likes. I have Moon of the Crusted Snow by Walgishig Ross. I'm, I apologize. This is, this might not even be a thriller. This may be more horror, but I think it's another like society has collapsed book. I have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, another book that might be more of a horror. This follows a group of Native American men, and I think they have angered a spirit, a Native American spirit, and it's after them. I have The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I think this may follow a podcaster who does true crime stuff, and then she gets asked to help actually with this case or maybe like a cold case or maybe there are two cases and one is current and one's a cold case and she gets wrapped up in both of them. I don't know, I might have completely made that up. I have The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I know Kirsten likes one of her books and I have this book. I've had this book for a long time. Like this was back when I was still buying like mass market books occasionally. I think I bought this because I saw it recommended on Reddit. I have the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This is a like Groundhog's Day type thriller. Like you as the reader go back and relive this murder through different perspectives of the people who are there and then I don't really know what else happens. I have Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, aka Sean and McGuire. This might be a thriller, I don't know. It follows a group that goes to the Mariana Trench and I think a TV crew had like disappeared after they filmed mermaids there and then they recovered their footage. I don't know. I have Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is a, maybe this is like a familial, a familial thriller. I think like some bad things happened to some sisters. And while we're talking about that Karen Slaughter on Kindle, I also have The Good Daughter. No clue what it's about. I have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This follows a girl who is currently, when we start the book, in prison and she's trying to get a lawyer to help her out because she got imprisoned for the murder of this child that she was like babysitting and like she was in this like smart house 
I don't know. I have heard this is really pretty good. I have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is a classic. This is probably more of like a horror book. I know in the Netflix series you follow like a family, but I think in the book like some people just go and stay in this haunted house. I have Final Girls by Riley Sager. This could probably also be another one of someone running away from their past, but the Final Girls are like, it's like a support group almost of girls who have been in situations where they were like the only person left living and then I think they start getting killed. I have The Mist by Stephen King. A mist comes and some people get caught in a grocery store, I think. I have The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I think Caroline made me buy this book too. Caroline, if you're watching this, you have influenced several purchases for me. I have no idea what this is about. I have The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is a Jane Eyre retelling of a thriller. There are probably two wives and I don't know what else. I have The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. I don't really know if this is a thriller, but you follow a girl whose mom ran away from like her parents house and then the daughter goes back to live there and like some bad things were happening. I have this iconic cover, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This follows a girl whose dad wrote a horror book that was like loosely based around their lives and she doesn't know if it's real or not. The last few physical books I have are more YA. I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson and people seem to love this book. It follows a girl in high school and she's doing like a capstone senior project on a cold case but then she actually starts solving things and then some things start happening in her current life also. I literally have this entire series of a study in Charlotte's the first one is the Charlotte Holmes series. I have three of them and I think it might be like the complete series. I haven't read any of them. These are Sherlock Holmes YA retellings, mysteries, and the last physical books I have are Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare. These are the first two books in Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious series. This follows a girl who goes to like this boarding school and then she starts solving mysteries there. And I think it's another like dual timeline, like some people disappeared in the past, like when the school was founded and she's trying to solve that mystery, but then some stuff starts happening in her current times. There's like a theme with these YA cold case mysteries and I'm on to them. <laughs> Let's quickly go through all the Kindle thrillers I have. I have Devolution by Max Brooks. This might be more of like a horror book, but it's like a Sasquatch Bigfoot top story. I have When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This is a like neighborhood thriller and it has to do with gentrification. Also, Alyssa Cole writes romance novels. I have My Sister's Grave by Robert Dugoni. No clue what that's about. I think it was just like super, super cheap and had lots and lots of reviews. I have I Can Be a Better You by Taryn Fisher no clue what it's about. I have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. That's like a another isolated setting. I almost picked this for my isolated setting trope, but there's like a wedding party and you know someone's going to die, but you don't really know who it is until the end and you solve the murder. I also have The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. No idea what that one's about. I have Lakewood by Megan Giddings, I think it is. And I think this is about like this institute that experimented on young black girls. I'm not sure. This also might be more horror than it is thriller. But also like what's horror and what's thriller? Like, I don't know. I have Into the Forest by Jean Hegland. I don't know what this is. I think Kayla from Books and Lala recommended this one also. And when the price dropped on it on Kindle, I picked it up. I have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This is a Grady Hendrix book and this is also probably more horror. I read his book with the really pretty cover that I love and it's about an exorcism, my best friend's exorcism last year and I didn't love it. So I am interested to pick up some more books from him. I have The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. One of my friends really likes this series and she recommended it to me so I have the first two in it. I think there are only two out in it and this is a mystery series, I think, and we probably solve murders. I have Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a story about, I think it's a friendship story. And they're like, I don't know what grade they are in school, 
but it's like they come back from summer break and Monday, who is a girl, is not there. And it's like, she's a young black girl. And I think this has to deal with like kind of people flying under the radar and going unnoticed, like bad things that happen to them going unnoticed. And I think her friend tries to figure out where she's gone. Okay, last five books. I have The Stillwater Girls. Oh, I don't know who the author is. I have The Stillwater Girls. I'll put the picture up here and you can see the author. I don't know what this is about, but like I see the cover a lot and I hear pretty good things about it, I think. I have The Hollow Places. Again, I didn't write down who the author was. I think Caroline read this recently, but I picked this up when Books and Law, when she read all of the horror Goodreads nominees. So again, this might be more horror. I think this follows a museum, but you can also go into different realities or different worlds. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I have like lots of Dean Koontz books and they are typically pretty thrillery. So I just wanted to mention those. I have The Cypher by Isabella Maldonado. So like Amazon does this thing where they'll like send you some new releases and you can pick one of them for free. And I picked this one and I have no idea what it's about. Okay, I hope this video is not half an hour long, but those are all of the unread thrillers I have. And those are all the books that I'm hoping to read April 19th to I think it's April 28th is the Thrills and Chills Readathon. I will have all that information linked below. I'm super excited to read some thrillers because I just don't typically pick those books up. So let me know what you thought of any of the books in this list. Let me know if any of them meet that unreliable narrator trope and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next one.